to the skip. Coming to your line. Strata Real Six Aquatic Kennels. Today's video, we're going to discuss the differences between the Antilopus zadiosum right before you. It's a lot of glare in this aquarium. Let's take a look at my young Will. They both the same age, but my smaller zadiosum. The larger one is the belly brother to this smaller male. This male is in breeding dress because he has another female on the opposite side of him. But we're going to discuss the differences between the Antilopus zaliosum and Sagittae. So anybody up for learning something new, not regurgitated information that you get on the internet and on different blogs and Facebook page and things of that nature. You're going to get the real deal information, if I may add. Knowledge only means something when you share it. And that's what I'm here to do, people. I'm here to share information. I'm not here to convince anyone of anything. You, can, you don't have to take my word for it. Do your own due diligence. Do your own research. But understand this. I am a research analyst by trade. I get paid top dollar to do research for top firms in Washington, D.C. So I know what I'm doing when I do research. I know the right questions to ask to get the right answers and the right conclusion. I know how to put the pieces to the puzzle together. That's the difference between me and someone who just keeps aquariums and cichlids in aquariums or any fish, tropical fish or anything. That's the difference between a person who just keeps tropical fish, large aquariums and tanks, or film or take video or pictures of fish in the wild or in their habitat. Even the difference between people who fish for fish or fish for tropical fish. That doesn't make you a research analyst. That doesn't make you a biologist. That doesn't make you an ichthyologist. That doesn't make you a geneticist. When your check engine light come on in your car, you don't call a aquarium maintenance guy. You don't call a plumber. You don't call a carpenter, you call a certified mechanic to figure out what's wrong with it. And that's the same in this hobby, people. When you have a genetic issue or controversy, when you have an issue where you're trying to, to decipher and describe a different species in the breed standards, you go to a geneticist, you go to a biologist, an ichthyologist, or a research analyst, and you ask them the questions that need to be asked to get the answers that you need. All too often in this hobby, I've noticed that people just go by hearsay and what they see on the internet. The internet is full of information. It's the information highway. But not all that information is true or factual. So with that said, let's continue on with this video. But first, let's check out Wikipedia's definition of Zadiosa. Let's check out Wikipedia's definition and take on the Amphilopus Zadiosum. Amphilopus Zadiosum is a species of cichlid that inhabits Lake Apoyo in Nicaragua. It is known in the aquarium trade as Arrow Cichlid. It is an elongated species in the Midas cichlid species complex. I repeat, Midas cichlid species complex. What does that mean? That means this species is related to the Midas cichlid. It has similar characteristics as the Midas cichlid. It may even possibly derive from the Midas cichlid long ago. Genus Amphilopus, rank species. Okay, now that we have checked out 
Wikipedia's definition of Zaliosa. Let's check out some photos on the internet of Zaliosa. And then we're going to check out some photos of what's supposed to be this species right before you, the Amphilopus sagittae. Come on out of boot. Now I want you guys to take a close look at this Amphilopus sagittae. He is approximately 13 inches. He is a full grown, fully developed sagittae. Look at his coloration. He used to be a, a cream sickle color. He used to have a lot of orange in his tail and in his top dorsal fin area. But that all faded as he got older and bigger. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for the fact that you see this fish before you, a pure Antelope Sagitta, mature adult, at this size, let's see if we can get this, this new digital camera, we can get some detail, like, you just, you just cooperate with me. You can see like where he went up to the filter, it looked like little bubbles in between his, his skin and his scale areas. See right there on the side? That's from coming up to the top right here to get food. It's transparent. Pure white transparent cichlid. We're gonna get into detail about that, people. So remember that as we proceed on with this video. Okay. <clears throat> Let's take a look at some internet photos of Amphilopus Zaliosis. Let's check out this one. Here's an interesting photo from Jeff Raps. An Amphilopus Zaliosum pair with fry. Let's see if we can come to an agreement on this particular photo. Yes we can. This is in fact a pair of Amphilopus Zaliosum. Nice thick bars, the white grayish sheen between the bars. This is definitely a pair of Amphilopus Zaliosa. Let's see some other ones. Here's an awesome illustration of an Amphilopus Zaliosa. Check out the mouth region, the head. Nice blunt, rounded head, face. Has that Lake Apoyo, I call it the Lake Apoyo greenish hue in the face and around the mouth area with the dark black bands or bars, grayish backdrop. This is definitely. An Amphilopus zaliosum and a very good photo of an Amphilopus zaliosum. Reminds me of my large 10 inch male when he's not in his breeding dress. Let's check out another one. Got from another angle. Again, the same fish, blunt snout, rounded head area, profile to fit the profile to a T. And it's, I guess it's coincidental that this is a 9 to 10 inch male as well. Let's see if we can pan over here. Just like the male I have in my possession. With one of my males. Now let's go through here and see if we can find some misrepresentations of Ampelopus zadios. This 
this guy looks like an Amphilope Azaliosum, but there are some slight differences in this fish. The body structure is a little a little more rounded. It has a high arcing build. Got half the bars. Even have the, the greenish hue face of a Licopoyo resident. But the shape in this area is a little off. The roundness of the gill plate between the gill plate, the eyes, and the mouth, the separation is off. This fish right here is more likely an Amphilopus flavorous, which is consistently mislabeled as Zaliosums. Let's check out another one. This is a beautiful fish. And in my opinion, this is an Amphilopus Zaliosum. The round head smooths out to that blunt. The gill plate is closer to the eyes and the mouth, the head region. This is an older male. He's, he's an awesome specimen. And I believe this is an F1 male from Jeff Raps. And he's 11 inches. And very thick as I read the literature to my right describing this fish. So Raps is pretty on point when it comes down to the Amphilopa Zaliosa. <clears throat> oh, we don't want to talk about this fish yet. Step away from that one. Here's another illustration of a smaller, younger male Amphilopa Zaliosa. Elongated body. I believe this is an Amphilopus Zaliosa. This is an illustration, and this is a copyright, so I don't want to go too deep into this one. But this one is not an Amphilopus Zaliosum at all. It's black. Short body. But there's some clues that tell me that this is not an Amphilopus Zaliosum. This is a, a stork eye. Or storky. Amphilopus. Talk about that in a later video. Here's another picture of this fish. Now this this fish is labeled two things, Zadiosum on the internet and Sagittae. And I can tell you right now this it's either or. It's not a Zadiosum nor is it a Sagittae. This is an Amphilopus flavorous. So let's take a look at some Amphilopus Sagittaes. Okay. Now, these are supposed to be Amphilopus Sagittaes. And I guess this illustration right here is supposed to be a barred variation of an Amphilopus Sagittae. But if you look very closely, the greenish hue face, the distance between the eyes, the gill plate, the mouth, the head region, the body structure. This fish is built more like a Zadiosum and not a Sagittae. Has the blunt mouth. It doesn't come to that little peak at the tip right there. So in my opinion, this is not a Sagittae. And then if you look at the, the literature on the side, it says Amphilopus Sagittae Black Devil. Guys, 
that is a myth. The Zaliosum is the black devil. And we're going to get into that. Sagittarius cannot possibly be considered a black devil. And that's for a very specific reason. Let's see if I can find some real Sagittarius. This is another Jeff Rapp's photo of an Amphilopus Sagittarius. Now this is truly a Sagittarius. Let's see if we can find another one. This is a Jeff Rapp's photo of what's supposed to be an Amphilopus Sagittarius. Now I am in disagreement with Jeff Rapp's on this photo because I believe this is a peel Heloensis and not a Sagittarius. And that's mainly because Sagittarius are not built this way. The body is too blunt and muscular and stout. Rounded. As you can see. As I go over with the cursor. The, the eyes, the gill plate, and the mouth area are off. Sagittarius have a greater distance between the mouth and eyes. And these are details that I, I have a trained eye. I can see these details. In fact, this is probably a heloensis. And this fish from Jeff Rapps is more likely a Sagittarius. Look at the distance between the mouth and the eyes. It's greater. The distance between the eyes and the gill plate. And it has the arrow-like structure. As you can see, that slope, that down, that incline, the decline. And then when you get to the mouth region, let's see if I can zoom in on it. You can see that it has that little peak right there. It's blunt around the side, very similar, because they don't have lips exactly like a Libby Adams Red Devil per, per se but their lips do come to a little arrow tip point not quite as blunt as its counterpart the Zalios and then another quick tip you guys are going to really learn something in this video the Amphilopus Zaliosum never Holly Peel. It, it's possible, but they remain dark with bars like this guy. This is a Zodiosum, not a Sagittarius. It's, it's listed as a Sagittarius, but it's not. This fish will not peel. Nine times out of ten, it will not peel. You may have to water it down a few generations in order for it to peel, but in general, in the wild, Zodiosums do not peel. But guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, this is something you won't hear nowhere else but Fish Lord One Channel. The Sagittarius has the highest peel ratio of all Midas subspecies, including the Centronellums. Midas. Here's another illustration. That is a Sagi, a beautiful Sagi. Looks just like my Sagi that you guys just seen in my video. King Abu. Pure white. Has the distance between the eyes and the mouth. Look at that distance, people. Look at that distance between the gill plate, the eyes and the mouth. See, if you go, Earl, just like this, if you take your, your cursor and draw a line from here to the eyes and from here to the eyes with the gill plate, you will have an Earl tip. You will have an Earl point, a triangular shape. That's the difference. Please, people, don't come on my page with that clown stuff. Oh, you got to Those are saggies. <laughs> Do your research. I do real research and I ask questions of people who are native to where these fish come from. The Sagittarius, the word Sagittarius means white arrow, transparent arrow. That is the meaning. Look up the meaning, the definition of the word Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the brightest star in the constellation or the brightest white or arrow. 
do you think it's by coincidence that the word Sagitte means bright and white arrow, but the word Zadiosum is the total opposite? Black, dark arrow? Now, it was a mistranslation when they first discovered the Zadiosum. They thought that the native people were saying black devils. See, people think we call them black devils because people didn't know better and it was a dark antelope species, so people just was calling it black devil. No, there was a mistranslation when they discovered this fish. And they thought the native people was calling it black devil when they was really calling it black arrow because they say it shoots through the water as fast as an arrow, like a, a arrow, like a black dot through the water. The Zaliosum, that is. And that's why they call him the Black Devil till this day. But you, do you think it's odd that the Zaliosimus can really consider the Black Devil and the Sagitte is considered the White Arrow? Why is that? Because Sagittes have the highest percentage rate, ratio of peeling out of all the Amphilopus species. Sagitte, you would not find a 13, 12 inch or 10 inch Sagitte that is barred because by that time it matured enough to have peeled this color. That's why you always see large white Sagittes and you rarely see large bar Sagittes. I guarantee you if you go on the internet like we are now and they're calling these type of fish Sagittes, they're calling this fish a Sagittes. It looks a lot like my large male or my smaller male too as well. But this is not a Sagittes people. This is not a Sagittes. Most of the time the fish that they're calling Sagittes are really another Amphilopus species, such as the Flavorous, the Astorchi, and the Zaliosum, and even Heloensis. Uh so, allow me <clears throat> to ask you guys this question. Common sense question. Do you think that it was by accident or design when the Anthelopus zadiosum was classified as the black arrow from Lake Apoyo and the Anthelopus sagittea was classified as the arrow of Lake Hilo. See, unlike some of you guys, I know that right now, to this date, biologists and ichthyologists and scientists in general are studying both crater lakes to try and figure out why is it that the species of cichlids, especially in the Anthelopus genus, have a higher percentage ratio of peeling than the ones in Lake Apoyo. Lake Hilo species peel at a higher percentage when we're talking about the Amphilopus. And Lake Apoyo does not. Most Lake Apoyo inhabitants rarely peel an orange, white, cream sickle variation and we talking about those species we talking about the chancho we're talking about the species we're discussing in this video the zadios we're talking about multiple species from Lake Apoyo the flavorous the stork eye those species rarely peel. And in fact, the stork eye, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, is the true black Amphilopus species. It is considered black completely. They rarely show bars. They just they they normally are all black. But as you go from generation to generation, you start to water them down, they do display bars. Just like when you go through generations of aquarium raised Zaliosum, after time they're watered down to the point to where they hardly display their bars and they're just a grayish color. 
like the big male that I have, who was displaying bars when I originally got him, but as he matured, he started showing a more grayish color, especially in his breeding dress. With my other smaller male, which is his belly brother, both those two males and my female are siblings. But the smaller ones that I raised in my aquarium display bars. And the larger one that was raised by a good friend of mine in a very large aquarium, a 180 to be exact, really shows his bars. He's just a dark color, sometimes a dark grayish color. And he grew a lot faster than mine because that person feed their fish more often than I do. And he was, like I said, raised in a larger aquarium. But they are siblings, belly siblings. But the point is, the Lake of Pollo inhabitants really peel. You will hardly ever see a peel chancho. I'm the only one that has one on record that peel. You'll never see a large white or cream sickle zodiosum. It's just not in their genetic composition. It's just not in their nature to peel. But you will see heloensis peel. You will see Amaryllis peel. You will see Sagittaries peel. More so than any other Amphilopus cichlid, even including the Centronellums Midas. Sagittaries peel more than they do. You see just as many barred Midas as you see peel Midas. That should tell you something in itself. And how come? The white peel variation Sagittaries never throw off a bunch of barred Sagittaries that look like this guy right before you. Have you ever asked that question? Uh-huh, leave you something to think about. Now let's take a look at my pair and then we'll move forward. that you have seen my pair the pair in question because there were some people who stated to me in my past videos that I was mislabeling my fish and they didn't want to see people in the hobbyist that listen to me be confused and do the same thing and I told them, all I asked was a simple question. You can go back and look at my videos and look at the comments. I'm not going to mention any names because that's not my style. But all I asked for them to do is present me with some information, some background on why they came to that conclusion. The guy stated that he's been breeding Sagittae for years. He's been selling them to Jeff Raps and Don Coco and other distributors. And that's what his, those were his words. They on my video. You can check out the comments. And I guess that was supposed to be his credentials. He said he knows someone who takes videos and pictures of him in the water. I assume he's talking about William Henge. But that's not evidence. That's not telling me anything. I said, well, send me some pictures of your fish and then we can do a comparison. And then I'll send you my evidence and you send me your evidence. My documentation and your documentation. Documentation beats conversation all day long. He couldn't provide me with it. You should check out his answer. <laughs> it was very funny because he doesn't know he's going by what someone else say he's going by information that he found on the internet when you do research like myself you understand that there's a lot to cipher through when you're on the internet all the information is not factual and you have to only deal with the facts and the facts support what I say 
Sagittarius are appeal variation Amphilopus Midas subspecies complex. 98% of the time, if you, you pull a Sagittarius out of the water of its natural habitat, it will be peeled. Yes, Sagittarius are born barred, but shortly afterwards, they peel. That is a fact. Look it up. All the information I've shown you guys over the past, and some of the documents and stuff that I have read on the internet and looked up, I've read it all the way through. A lot of people don't. They just skim through it. But I read it all the way through. And then I call some of the universities in Central America. And I call some of the biologists and ichthyologists in Central America. I got their numbers and got their contact information. And ask them specific questions that lead me to believe that this species right here before you is the true Sagittae. And this is true nature and true form. White. Not barred. So, let's take a look at some of the reasons why people may want to mislead you in a certain direction. You know, we have splitters and we have lumpers. I'm like sort of in between. But I know of a person who is a, a lumper. And let's listen to how he eloquently explained the reason why splitters and lumpers exist and why splitters like to for commercial gain split cichlids in different categories let's check out wapo male a clip of wapo male explaining that very thing Right there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and um, if I move this way you see a pair of Zaliosum um, also in the uh, tank are many um, anywhere from three to like I said eight or nine fish right now the arrows come from uh, one lake they're endemic to Lake Apoyo in Nicaragua it's one of the smaller lakes whereas uh, some of the other fish live in a multitude of different lakes Kind of going to go a different direction here on this. This pair is oh six years old or so, I suppose. The male's about a good foot. The female's maybe eight inches. They've spawned numerous times in this tank. There are still a few of its uh, fry. Or they're not frying. I, I keep calling small fish fry, but um, it's hard to not do that when you've raised them from from the get go. Anyway, there's three generations of arrow cichlids in this tank. Uh, the easiest way to tell uh, arrows from the other species of red, the red devil type species is, of course, the arrow shape and the fact that, uh, for the most part, they're just black and white fish. Um, they don't get any orange or whites or any of the other pinkish hues that some of the other ones get. Um, there are nowadays, like I said, uh, probably, I think we're up to about eight or nine different species in the red devil complex. Um, and that kind of depends on who you talk to. Um, there are splitters and lumpers when we talk about ichthyologists. I tend to be more of a, a lumper, um, which of course means you lump um, a lot of fishes into the same species where splitters tend to split them up into more, more unique species based on some pretty minor characteristics like maybe size or slightly different colors. Uh, not surprisingly, a lot of the the splitters have commercial um, gain for the splitting them into different species because, of course, they get a higher price if it's a new and unique species or if it's something that people don't think they have. So, uh, again, there are splitters. So, as we finish recapping, I really enjoyed the way Mel broke it down between the splitters and lumpers. For commercial gain. I couldn't have put it better myself. That was excellent. As we take a look at a photo of my Sagittae. Before he was in my possession. And look at his coloration. And look how since then he has evolved into 
an all-white species of Sagittarius, no longer creamsicle. There are always clues, people. It is not by coincidence that this species of Amphilopus is called Sagittarius, and the other one from Lake Apoyo is called Zadios. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please leave me some comments at the bottom. Give me your thoughts on the topic at hand. And with that said, this skip. I'm out.